It's one of the most well-known hits by one of the greatest bands of the 80s. So why are we all still playing Still of the Night wrong? On today's video, we take a deep dive into the tiny details that have been glossed over on all the internet tabs for this classic tune. Well, hello there, guys. It's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. Here recently, I sat down in front of the old YouTube machine and simply typed in White Snake, Still of the Night, Guitar Only, and I found a channel called Digital Split that happened to have the isolated guitar track from this song. I sat down and I listened to it, and I was blown away at all the teeny tiny details that I've missed, even though I've listened to this song and performed it with my band Skank Banger like eight million times. And on today's video, we're gonna break down all those juicy little details that I came across. That way you can play it right too. As always, downloadable tabs, bonus lessons, backing tracks, and so much more can be found over on the coolest place on the entire interweb, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Everybody who supports my channel, even at just a $1 a month level, gains access to all kinds of great stuff, so head on over to patreon.com slash benellerguitars and sign up today. Thanks. And if you're playing the home game, be sure to take a shot every time I have to retune this fucking Les Paul. Lick number one, main riff mess up. So in the verses, there's that little back and forth exchange between you know, the guitars and the vocals, and then they get into that super sassy F-sharp blues scale riff, and it seems like most of the tabs have you getting into it with something like this. And when you play it that way, it sounds right, but when you listen to the isolated guitar track, you'll hear that every time they get into this riff the first time, they actually play this lick. So you'll notice that it just kind of rolls up the F sharp blue scale, then comes back down on the flat five, the C out here. The only kind of weird exception that you'll notice to this is actually the very first time in the song that they play it. It sounds like one of the guitars grabs this, like this high A note right here on the G string. But all the rest of the song, it's the E note. So that makes me think that this A was maybe kind of a mistake. Another little thing that I noticed too is at the end of that riff when they play the E to B part, I believe they're using these voicings. This is like your big three octave E power chord, O, two, two, four, five, like that. And then you just kind of bring it down to a standard, you know, kind of B bar chord, two, four, four, four. Number two, the kooky chorus licks. So in my head and in most of the tabs that I see, it always has something like this. Pretty standard power chord kind of stuff. But if you listen, the groove pattern on the A parts is a little bit different and there's some extra magic going on on that B chord. Let's check it out. Kind of does a simple pattern, then a more complex pattern, and then there's also a lick that he throws in there. So the simple pattern sounds like this. So you can hear that's just an A, then this E, G, E lick down here on the bottom string. After that, he always plays this. A little bit punchier pattern. Two A's, and then G, E, G, E. Those are all kind of palm muted down there in that low E string too, that way they're extra punchy. So you got the simple one, and the hard one. Go back to the simple one, and then check this out. So basically they replace the complex pattern with this. So that's two A's, and then we have this pull off lick on the A string, that's five, two, open, and then on the low E another G to E, the third to open there. Most of the tabs I see have this, like doing two, five, two, open, three, O, like that. 
But if you listen to the isolated track and use like the speed feature here on YouTube to slow it down, it's pretty clear to me that he's not starting on that B note. I thought that he did for years, but when you listen to the isolated track, it sounds like he's starting right there on D, like that. Now after this, he does this lick. I never in the million times that I listened to the song ever heard that lick right there. So you got your B power chord, right? And then what he does is play this. It's the single little stab on an E major triad. This is the D string six, G string four, B string five. He goes from B to the E triad, then back to B again. A, G, and then what's that chord right there, right? Most of the tabs I see just have an F power chord. It's actually your F power chord plus the open G string. You'll notice I'm doing that by using my thumb on the root note, these two fingers on the fifth and root, and then grabbing that G string open. You could also do that with the standard grip too, if that's more your thing. Now with a chord like this, we have root, fifth, root, and then this G note, which is the second. So a chord that's spelled out root, second, fifth is technically a sus two chord. So this is an F sus two, rather than just a regular F power chord. Number three, the Bodacious Bridge. Now what he's doing here is starting off with a D power chord, and then check this move. So what I'm doing right there is from my D power chord, I'm uh, going up here to the E note on fret number seven on the A string. I'm gonna hit that note and slide up a full step. Then just set my first finger down here and bar the next three strings, the D, G, and B, all on fret number seven. So it takes it from being just a plain old, you know, cheese pizza power chord and adds in a little bit more harmony in there. That way you get that full bodied major flavor. That's the exact same move, only taking place a whole step lower on C. So you start with your C power chord. You're gonna have your little whole step up, slide up, and bar. And then this. Again, another triad that all of the tabs miss. Sometimes I see this. That's not quite it. This is a G triad that he puts in right here. This is the fifth fret D, fourth fret G, and third fret B. Kind of gives you that nice walk down sound to the next detail that we're going to talk about right here. So this is a little pedal tone lick under A, and I'm grabbing the D and G here on fret number five and sliding them up to seven. That concludes with another epic slide and that same F sus2 power chord that we played earlier, which leads us into section number four, the whole lot of lovely bridge. Okay, so it seems like the only sections of this bridge that everybody has tabbed out are kind of the obvious, you know, those sections right there, which are super dope. But there are so many little hidden gems throughout this section of the song that I gotta cover some of the coolest ones. At around two minutes and 20 seconds into the song, after a very sultry, ooh baby, courtesy of Mr. Coverdale, we have this really cool lick that is played behind that. And uh, it sounds like it was played on a guitar with a tremolo. There's some little tremolo bumps and stuff in there to lead you into some of these notes. But uh, clearly I can't do that on a Les Paul. But the lick sounds something like this. Kind of puts you in the mindset of something another future white snake guitar player might play, right? All based around the E minor scale. You can see he's sliding into the B note, the fifth right there. The D note, the minor seven, sliding into G right here, the flat third, really outlining kind of an E minor seven kind of sound. And then leaving us hanging right here on F sharp, the German interval, the nine. At about 235, we get another sexy mournful lick in the key of E minor that starts with a cool volume as well, kind of Gary Moore-ish. Check this one out. So this is basically just a trip straight down the E minor scale. There's not really a lot of picking or anything right here. You'll notice that you actually start to lick off with the volume knob on the guitar all the way down. We're doing the F sharp note again right here, fret number 11 on the G. We gotta go ahead and pick that note and give it a half step bend. That way it's the note G now. As I do that, I'm gonna roll the volume up. That way you don't really hear the attack. 
let the bend down, pull off to E, and then we're gonna start walking down the D string right here. We're gonna have D, C, B, slide down to A. Lost my sustain there. There we go. And then on the A, we're gonna just keep walking down the scale here. Gonna grab the G note here, pull off to F sharp, pull off to E, slide down to D, slide down to C. Nice. Two minutes, 45 seconds into the bridge right here, we get these really sorrowful extended chords that I never see anybody tap out. Check these out. So this right here is a big old stretchy boy. We're gonna have seven on the A, nine on the D, 11 on the G, and then eight on the B string, okay? We're gonna pick through that. Then what you gotta do is to basically take all these fingers except for your first finger off. That way you're barring fret number seven. And I just hit the B, G, and D strings right there. And then on the right side of the mix, we get a different guitar that comes in and plays a variation on that that sounds like this. It's almost the same thing. You got that same E minor add nine with the picking thing. Your flat bar. And then what you're gonna do is to play that 10th fret on the B string. Now this is kind of the same sound that you hear in Is This Love off of the same record. This sort of C Lydian sound that he starts off with here, I'm gonna finger it like this. I've got my third A, my fourth D, you'll notice I'm using my third finger for that. There's that sharp 11 sound. My open G string. My B string is gonna be here on the third fret with my second finger, so you really gotta bend that guy down so you can get to that note. Open high E string. You'll notice the picking there it went A, D, G, E. So skip the B string the first time through. Then hit the B on that third. And then with your little finger here, you're gonna grab the fourth or sorry, fifth fret on the G. That's the C note, the same as the root. And then what you're gonna do is to take this finger off and play the open B. It's a lot of stuff going on for not all that much, but it sounds like this. And then little finger goes down, middle finger comes off. And that's followed up with another E minor 9 sound. I love this voice in here. I've got my open low E, 7th fret A, 4th fret on the D string. That's that 9th, your F sharp note again. And picking wise, you're going to go E, A, D, G. That's your open G. Back to the D, and end on the B string. Okay? And there's a little vibrato there with the tremolo bar again. Around 325 in the song is where we get to the part that, like I said, all the tabs already have covered. That section right there. But behind that, there's a layer of harmonics that everybody seems to miss that sound really cool and add a lot to that part. It sounds like this. That's just a G fret 5 harmonic, a B fret 7 harmonic, and then a G fret 7 harmonic. That's it. At around the four minute mark into the tune, we come out of the bridge into riff number five. I think we're on five now. I really have lost track. But either way, it's those sweet chord stabs that come in before the shredding happens. So we're starting off with our big E. This is the same kind of three octave E power chord voicing we used earlier. Then we're coming here into a D power chord. And again, maybe he has the root, maybe he doesn't. Maybe it's just these two, kind of hard to say. This is a three note G power chord, five, seven, eight on the D, G, and B strings. E, D, G. Go back to the D again. Then you're gonna go that C to D again right there. And it definitely sounds like he ditches the bass note on that D. I don't think he hits that one. That leads you to this section right here. First one here is a G. 
And this is just basically D, G, and B strings all on fret number 12. Then we play a D triad. This is 12 on the D, 11 on the G, and 10 on the B. Give them some sassy vibrats and it'll sound even better. So you got G to D, then we get this move. Okay, so this is an A triad here. I'm grabbing D, G, and B on uh, 11, 9, and 10. That's my A triad. And then do another one finger bar on fret number 10 of those same three strings. This is an F triad. So this section here has gone from G to D, A to F, okay? After that, you play the big series of big power chords down here again. And then you're gonna play G to D, just like before, and then this. So this is the A triad again, but instead of ending on F on fret number 10, you're gonna end on E, which is fret number nine. It's kinda of like a little happier ending. You know, the first time it ended on F, which sounded very dramatic, this time it ends on E, which is a little bit more happy and hopeful. So you get G, D, A, F. G to D, A to E. And that, of course, leads us up to one of the most smoldering, smoking, shred-tastic, hotly debated, inaccurately tabbed moments in 80s guitar history. You know the one I'm talking about. And that's it. Okay, I realize that was like the cruelest joke I've ever played on my YouTube channel, but I will do it one day, but I think if I dug into that right now, it would make this video probably an additional, you know, 20 minutes longer or something like that. So, you know, just wait for a rainy day. Actually, it is a rainy day right now. Wait for another rainy day. We'll cover it then. After the solo, we go over repeats of a lot of the sections that we've already talked about before we end up at the last thing that we're gonna cover today, which is that awesome, ever-evolving outro. First up, we got this set of chords. Pretty standard stuff. Starts off with that same big three octave E power chord you've been using. Your D power chord to your C power chord. And then you're gonna play that little John Sykes lick right there. I think it's a Sykes thing anyway. I might be wrong. Anyway, all you're doing there is there's your C power chord, right? Move your first finger up a step, do a little hammer on, then put your first finger down for a flat bar on D, G, and B strings. Then we got another G triad, just like we did earlier. This is D, G, and B strings, little stair steps. Five, four, three. There's your G triad right there. Leads you to an A power chord, a G power chord. It's kind of the ACDC style G, by the way, where you're not playing the second fret A string, you're just kind of muting it. And then, okay, this is that F sus2 we've been using, but I'm actually gonna go back and correct myself because now that I listen closer, I can hear that sometimes in the song they are getting this first fret B string note here, this high C note. It's still an F sus2, but it does mean you kind of have to play it with your thumb. One, three, three, open one is your grip that you're using to play that. E, D, C with the lick, G, A, G, F sus2. They go through that a couple times and then it further evolves into this. different right there. He's taking the same chord progression and just making it more better. So we're gonna start with the E, but this time instead of playing D here, he gets into it kind of in the open position, again using the thumb, proper rock and roll style right there, to grab E to F sharp on that low E string. Then you just strum the D chord. Go to your C, same lick, same little G triad, but then instead of simply playing A like he did before, he plays this. Just slide from five to seven. And then you're gonna slide down to your F sus2 again. 
Now, the next time through, you'll hear that they do a little variation. This is where the snare and the vocals and stuff are all syncing up for that still of the night, still of the night part. I always assumed it was, you know, really simple like that. So I've got my seventh fret E string and my 10th fret D string, and then I just slide the first finger up to turn it into an F power chord. And that leads us to the very last riff in the outro here, which is one that I usually see people play with just power chords, but it's actually a lot different than that. Check it out. So you're gonna start off here with your big three octave E power chord, followed by a D power chord and G power chord. And then you're gonna play these little triads on the D, G, and B strings. There's our first one here. This is a D triad. This is just a seventh fret uh, D, G, and B strings. Slide that down a whole step and grab fret number five, same three strings, for a C triad, okay? D, C, follow that up with G. This is your little stair step G shape again. Five, four, three, okay? D, C, G, and then you're gonna play C, G, C. So just more of those two shapes going back and forth like that. Before you come back again to that weird little first finger shift that we played earlier. So all together you're gonna have E, D, G, D, C, G, C, G, C. And that, kids, is every single tiny little detail that all of the internet tabs have missed in this 80s classic. Hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for new content coming at you every single week and ring the bell for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold. But uh, I think it's about time for you guys to get away from the computer and go play some Gortar. Less clicking, more picking.